that much about pensions, especially if uh, you're younger and don't, aren't thinking about it. So pensions work in two different ways. Basically, a pension is a financial investment that's designed to support your standard of living in that short period between the time you retire and the time you die. They come in two forms. One uh, is probably mostly familiar with people who work in the private sector now, is defined contributions. And the idea is that you put a fixed amount of money into these investments, your employer matches a fixed amount through the magic of the capital markets when you retire, it's bigger and hopefully will support you in your, uh, in your twilight years. The other kind is defined benefit, where the employer guarantees how much money you're going to get for the rest of your life once you retire. Uh, so, the magnitude of the problem, $111 billion in unfunded liabilities of all just the state uh, pension funds. There are five main pension funds that the state's responsible for. The city of Chicago has its own, all the municipalities have their own, all with their own various problems. But let's stick with the state for now. Uh, according to Wolfram Alpha, that winds up being $23,000 for every family in Illinois, or $146,000 for every employee that's in the system. Uh, and then because of uh, how uh, liberal the uh, returns that they're putting into this model, it's probably closer to $150 billion. The takeaway point here, though, from this our presentation, is this problem is solvable. Uh, you have to make some tough decisions, and you have to take everyone into consideration, but as long as we act now, it's solvable. Um, the other thing that's interesting in all of this is that there were some people, uh, I don't, when was the Constitution? When was the Constitution? 1970. 1970. There were some union people, I believe, who seemed to have a very good grasp of Illinois politics. <laughs> And they enacted a constitutional amendment that said that the state is forbidden to withdraw benefits that they've already extended to employees. And they knew that what was going to happen is the state was going to screw it up. They're going to say, oh, we're insolvent. We can't do this. And then take, the, take back these benefits. So this constitutional amendment says, that's your problem. That's not the employee's problem. You've got to sort it, sort it out. Um, it's created some difficulty, but I think it's created some, some useful difficulty. Um, <laughs> scroll up, and uh, so you figured this graph out. So this is my salary, and those are my benefits. Here's my contributions in the dark green. If we took, um, if we look at this bottom graph, the red line is the, uh, the growing, uh, <coughs> The value of my contributions. So the red, this, this red line to this point at retirement is how much uh, my all my contributions. These green ones are rolled up. Uh, how much they're worth at that point. Uh, the other red line is if uh, we did the same thing. How much we said? How much do you? How much, what kind of a fund would you need uh, at retirement to pay out all these benefits? Okay. And we applied the same. You know that this fund will will grow until you keep diminishing. Um, it, 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 the fund grows when you keep taking money out every year, so that's why it slows down. Okay, so uh, pretty simple. <clears throat> yeah. Um, our next step with this then is to allow you to um, do this not just for your current plan, but we also want to put right next to it the proposed Madigan plan, the proposed Rauner plan, the proposed Cullerton plan. And so in that way, uh, pensioners and taxpayers, anybody who's interested in this, can take a look at, and see how much of a haircut our uh, pensioners going to take under plan A or plan B or plan C. Uh, 